All right, we're back. We are on page 143. We're talking about finding the nth roots of a complex number. It's kind of a fun, cool thing to do. Like the, the fact that you can do it is kind of neat. Um, there's also this like super hippie notion, well, it just sounds it to me, of uh, that's related to it. And it's called finding the roots of unity, which I can only imagine is like an old timey thing, right? Some, some mathematician must have written that at some point and everybody's like, ooh. Um, but anyway, let's see if we can do it. So that just means find the nth roots of one. Um, so we're gonna try to find, uh, find n graph the cube roots of one. Well, the first problem is that one is a, a real number and we need a complex number because we're finding the nth roots of complex numbers. So I'm gonna first say that uh, I'm dealing with z, which is one plus zero i. Okay, to be able to use this, I need to know r and I need to know theta. So for this, uh, r is definitely one because that's how far you are from the origin. And then theta is definitely just zero because you're on the x-axis. So this is gonna be useful because it, it's like a little easier maybe than some other examples that we'll do, but it's okay, right? Start, start a little easy. So what we're gonna do is we know that k is gonna start at zero, then it's gonna be one, then it's gonna be two. And the reason for that is maybe I should have actually written this first. Uh, since we're finding cube roots, n equals three. And now we have everything like written out and we're ready to go. So we're gonna find the cube roots. So let's say z sub zero is going to be uh, one to the one third, which is just one. And then sys, so it's zero over three, which is obviously zero. So that's that's zero, that's theta over n. So zero over three plus two pi over three, that's two pi over n times zero. So this is actually just one cis zero, which we know what that is, that's just one. Okay, so z one. So this is when k is equal to one. It's gonna be one to the one third, that doesn't change. Cis zero over three doesn't change. Two pi over three doesn't change. And then this will become one. So this is one cis two pi over three. Um, so that's a famous one, right? So that's negative one half plus radical three over two pi. Okay, and then we let k equal two. So z two, one to the one third, we got cis zero over three plus two pi over three times two. That's one cis four pi over three. Now, once you found the first angle and you know how many roots you're doing, you can kind of like just keep going, right? It was zero. And I'm just gonna add two pi over three. So if I add two pi over three, I get this. If I add two pi over three, I get this. If I did it again, I would get four pi over three plus two pi over three is two pi, six pi over three, so two pi. Two pi and zero are coterminal. So it's just gonna give me the same um, rectangular representation. So I don't want that, I don't want too many. That's why there aren't an infinite number of cube roots. There's an infinite number of representations in polar, but there's a finite number. There's only three cube roots. And this is negative one half minus radical three over two pi. Okay, so now what I wanna do, so I'm stopping here. Right, so we, we draw a line. If we tried to go to Z3, we would just duplicate Z0. Um, it would look a little different, but it would be the same point. So now what I wanna try to do is plot these. So the first one was at zero. So think of the unit circle, right? Um, zero, so this is Z0. And then the next one was here. I wish I had turned off the label on this circle, but didn't do it. Uh, this was Z1, and then Z3. So the geometry of this is very cool. Uh, this is a circle. Uh, let's, let's see. So it's a circle. The radius of the circle is one to the one third, which is actually just one. So that's a terrible equal sign. Uh, so that's actually just one. And then the difference between them, so for the angles, so this is two pi over three, 
this is 2 pi over 3, and this is 2 pi over 3. So you can kind of breeze through finding these. The key thing is the first angle. You have to get the first one right. So it's not always so nice. Like right now, it's just zero, and so it's like super nice. It's not always nice. It's always nice when you're doing the roots of unity uh, because the angle for 1 plus 0i is always going to be zero. So here, if we do the, the finding graph of fourth root, so uh, let's do this, try to do it kind of quickly. 1 plus 0i. So we need r, which is 1. We need theta, which is 0. n is going to be 4. And since n is 4, k is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3. We don't go to 4 because that'll duplicate what we got at 0. So we stop there. All right, so z0 is going to be 1 to the 1 fourth, which is just 1. Sis, 0 over 4, and then 2 pi over 4 times first 0. So this is just 1 sis, ah, bad, bad looking s, bad looking everything. Sis, 0, which we know is just 1, 1 plus 0 i, but still. Z1, 1 to the 1 fourth, sis, 0 over 4 plus 2 pi over 4 times 1, which is going to be 1, sis. So, I mean, 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2. So, like, you could just reduce that. Uh, this will be pi over 2. So, that's going to be uh, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, sine is 1. So, this is just i. Z2, 1 to the 1 fourth, sis, 0 over 4 plus... 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2, times 2. So this will be 1, sis. I already know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep adding pi over 2. So 0, then pi over 2, then 2 pi over 2, which is pi. This will give me, uh, so the cosine of pi is uh, negative 1, and the sine is 0. So this is just negative 1. And then z3, 1 to the 1 4. So that part doesn't change. A lot, like most of this doesn't change. Uh, 2 pi over 4 doesn't change. This will be times 3. So this will be 1 sis. We're just adding pi over 2. So 3 pi over 2. And that gives me negative i. And now if I kept going, I would just duplicate 1 again. And then if I went another round, I would just duplicate i. And you just kind of like keep duplicating. So these are easy to plot. Here, here, here. Here, this is z0, z1, z2, z3. And then, uh, so you can see again, they're all on a circle of radius one. So this is r equals one to the one fourth, which is one. And the angles differ by pi over two, which is, I mean, very, the roots of unity, I mean, there's a reason you start with them. Like, it, it makes the most. I'm trying to do it so they're not like all overlap. I mean, they should probably all just be the same, but whatever. Okay, so these are two examples. I'm gonna come back in the next video. We'll do uh, like, you know, like a, a more, a slightly more complicated example where the initial angle isn't just zero. So zero over n isn't always zero. Well, zero over n is always zero, but like the initial angle theta divided by n doesn't always give you zero. So don't get under that impression. Um, and we'll do examples where it's not the case. So you'll see. Anyway, I will see you there where we're just going to do some practice. So hope you're finding these helpful.